drift of this has been uh, well it's been the result of lockdown obviously because I've been at home and I've been um, making music and it's taken on its own flavour um, and then at the end of the project I was uh, trying to think of a sort of uh, cover for it and came up with the, the idea of the Alka-Seltzer which I suppose you can read it any way you want and uh, you should it's totally ambiguous Yeah, well, I started I started out making music uh, before a lot of the technological innovations that have happened. I was interested in experimental music, and so I used a lot of early synthesizers and tape loops and made my instruments um, mainly using scrap metal and putting transducers on two pieces. Uh, we used to take car springs and... Um, put them in suspension using nylon cords and then play the cords with a violin bow with a transducer on the metal spring and we there was all kinds of experimentation and then um i was uh, that was in america and i came back to england and i eventually um was lent a system which was owned by a group called portion control who were friends they live around the corner and it was called a Greengate system for an Apple uh, Classic Mac, an 8-bit sampler. And this was the first sampling software, um, apart from a Fairlight, that you could actually get your hands on. And I found that very exciting. And, uh, and then when the Atari ST came out with a MIDI port, I bought one of those and used Pro24, uh, which was a sequencing uh, program software which then grew and went on to become Cubase and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now, I use Logic Audio. I use it on a rather old Macintosh and on a newer laptop. Uh, and I use, um, I mainly use that. And having had to move houses various times, um, I reduced the studio down to its more simple form. And so I don't use much um, outrigging as I used to but um, and that's that that's how it is at the moment the the reason I'm not on ninja tune anymore I think is 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 really because at a certain point in their life they decided to shed some of the acts and and, and go for something new because they wanted to appeal to a, a perhaps a more modern audience um, I think they could have done both, but frankly, telling you the truth, I think these days uh, the record a record label in my situation is rather irrelevant. Um, I'm sure they have a bigger mailing list than I do. But uh, apart from that, um, I like I went to Ninja Tune in the first place because they were an independent record label, and that was what was attractive about them. And now, of course, the independence is sort of semi-complete so perhaps I don't I don't um, uh, feel the I'm not sure a record label is as important for me as it once was I was when I was living in uh, London I had a uh, knew some guys who had a record label called Nine Bar Records and through them I met Amon who was making music under the name Cujo at the time and I thought his stuff was absolutely fantastically brilliant. I loved it. And uh, so we uh, collaborated together and did a track called Zed Cars. And then I then went to Ninja Tune and said, look, you know, you should have a listen to this guy's work because it's uh, really, really good. I don't really like going back to things that I think are finished. Um, I don't really like the idea of doing remixes. I'd always prefer to do something else and try and do it a bit better uh, for me, I suppose. Uh, New Dope was actually started out as a speech by Tony Blair, a very long explanation of him... A really sort of trying to explain about what he did and I 
took out all of the words and just kept all the the, um, the hesitations and the uh, and made it more meaningless. It felt meaningless at the time, and then uh, put the music around that. Um, and Belisha Beacon was uh, really came about through me having a particularly good day um, uh, at playing on the keyboard and um, coming up with uh, something that I quite liked. Yes, I suppose I make soundtracks for your head. It's the emotional content of the music that interests me. I think music has a an ability to communicate in an emotional way that is quite unique um, and is uh, an aspect of it that interests me the most. And so whatever you want to classify my music as, I really couldn't care, even if, if you wanted to call it uh, whatever I don't know, but it's uh, it's not really the it's not something I'm bothered with the classification of music. It's the music itself, and I don't want to classify it and pigeonhole things that much myself. Actually, I don't listen to that much music. I realise I I spend more time making music than listening to it. Um, but there are a few things that have influenced me recently. A couple of sites. One one site called uh, Radio, with it's Radio with about five A's after it, is a delightful site curated by some French people. French people, I think, um, and it's a map of the world with decades underneath, and you pick your decade and your country, and you can listen to music from that period from that country but it's the curation of the site that's so good that's introduced me to a lot of old music that I've really enjoyed and I tend to listen to as much old music that I haven't heard before as I listen to new music that I haven't heard before um, in fact sometimes I find myself trying to catch up on things that I feel I missed for one reason or another uh, there was a a record back in oh, about 2002, I think it came out. It was quite early uh, by some Russia, uh, Russian, some Russian guys called Muak and Lazyfish, and they made a record called, um, which was just them, Muak and Lazyfish. And um, unfortunately, Muak uh, is, is he was I believe he was killed in an altercation with the police in. Russia, but I'm, that's hearsay, so I'm not sure. Um, and unfortunately, there's no no more with us. But um, it's an amazing record. There are two tracks on that uh, record that I I absolutely just adore. I think of 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 all of the work that I've done. Um, I'm very, I'm very proud that um, my films have been shown at the National Film Theatre in London, and I think I'm, one of the pieces of work that I feel very good about is Incredible Thing, um, both the video and the and the well, mainly the video, um, and I think Conservative Apocalypse as well, um, because that was really quite a a, a, a big job. Uh, to do, but I'm I'm happy with those things, especially. The influences that have influenced me, um, well, obviously you can hear, you can hear the jazz, you can hear the, a bit of the dance music, you can hear several things, but I think that ultimately music is a very nebulous thing for me I can think back to being a child uh, and my father had a quite a wealthy friend who lived in Switzerland and we were on holiday and visiting him one time I was about eight years old and he had this special little room he really liked listening to jazz and he had this special little room in his house the most incredible hi-fi in it that I think I'd ever heard at that point in my life and we sat on this sofa and listened to G. Ellington playing back-to-back -back 
the Duke Ellington record with, that he made with Johnny Hodges back to back and side by side. And I remember that 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 very particularly and thinking, wow. And that is quite a wow record, actually. Uh, in fact, it provided a, an enormous amount of samples from for Nine Lazy Nine. Um, anyway, those are some those are some things that have influenced me. <laughs> 